So if we are to assess what leaders have done, let us first get the yardstick of their parliamentary output. Parliamentary output is discernible through how many or what specific legislations they supported during their tenure. And I'll start with myself. I was elected in Parliament many years ago when the earnings of a member of Parliament was 23,000. Many of us at those days used to drive second-hand vehicles and many other things in order to be in Parliament. But I also want you to note that I was elected 10 years after Dalma Sotieno had been in Parliament and had been in the entire tenure of those uh, 10 years a minister. In their time in Parliament, Dalma Sotieno, and the party that was ruling then, Kano, believed in handing out or doling out uh, handouts uh, to people so that they would be worshipped and they would be praised. The president of the day would form most of the news. And so Dalmas as a tenure was a tenure where you had to worship leaders. When we got to parliament, we were thrust out there. Yes, you were elected, develop your constituency. Sia Sambaya, Maishambaya, how watu wa mechagua, watu wa upinzani, wafanya maendeleo yao. And that was Kenya. So what we did, we formed a small committee. That committee was headed by Engineer Karwe, and that committee went out. It was also, had, it had the membership and blessing of Raila Molodinga, and the late President Kibaki. It went out and decided that even areas that were voting for opposition uh, inclined candidates deserved development because from such places taxes came. So that is what gave birth to the first opportunity to provide resources to constituencies called CDF. So these people who talk about development based on CDF are basically babysitting people's children the parents of CDF, I am one of them. My vote is there, my idea is there, my struggle is there. So when PESA talks about a few bridges without knowing the generation that brought it and why it was done, he is basically babysitting uh, somebody else's own child. In my tenure as Minister for Energy, which commenced on the 3rd of January, 2003 and ended on the 5th of October 2004, I, by executive order, created a fund called Rural Electrification Fund, specifically targeting uh, electrification of all constituencies. When he talks around that uh, he uh, was responsible for electrifying a few institutions, he is babysitting my child. I, as minister, would have just decided to electrify Irongo, but this was an opportunity and a mandate for all Kenyans, including Migori. So when PESA is walking around counting his products, he should also make reference to the parents, Pochilo being one of them, and he is babysitting my child. As Minister for Gender, Sports, Culture and Social Services, I established the Gender Commission, enacted the legislation, and appointed every commissioner there, including Professor Suda. Uh, so, when I hear them talking about uh, what they did, they are basically wana gawana ile kitu imetoka kwa granary ya raila na zile zimetoka kwa granary ya uchila. So they are basically our servants who are trying to uh, brag about things they didn't know how they came. Dalmas was there before us. He didn't introduce any policy. About the disability council, I am the one who enacted the policy and legislation, brought it to Parliament, the Youth Council. I am the one who enacted and brought the policy to Parliament. So the Youth Council, established by Minister for Gender, Sports, Culture and Social Services, and you can trace it back, you will find it was me. So in terms of the output that impacted and created opportunity for freedom of women in terms of gender, in terms of youth and empowerment of people in terms of electrification, in terms of roads, even the roads that are now devolved to constituency, we are the generation who establish it. So the challenge is, can Dalmas tell us the impact, because he was in the same parliament in which we, are, we were, the impact of his membership of parliament, if not, uh, 
because he was in parliament when Kenyans were under one party system. What did he do to create more freedom? The only uh, policy or legislation is responsible for is raising retirement age, perhaps to satisfy the actuarial uh, curiosity that Kenya does not have uh, enough revenue to pay retirees, of which is one of them. He was creating uh, or perpetuating uh, pensions for retirees. But he did not know the impact it would have on the employment of young people. If you extend a tenure for five years, it means there is no vacancy for young people for five years. And five years, every year, uh, there is a generation of people who join the labor market. So that was Dalmas's uh, impact in terms of policy. Uh, John Pesa, there is nothing to write home about him in terms of policy. There is nothing to say about him in terms of policy. So in terms of his tenure in parliament, it's absolutely nothing. Now, when it comes to constituencies where people <coughs> are represented, you can go to a Wendo and Rongo constituency. I am credited with the uh, establishment of all the day schools that uh, are functioning today. I am the one uh, who, uh, in my wisdom, and encouraged by my team then, uh, decided that we needed a transition from primary school to secondary school. So we established day schools that were accessible uh, to people of uh, meager resources. And uh, I did so in both Rongo and Awendo, and I'm remembered for that up to today. All those day schools, uh, we connected them to the electricity grid, and uh, the Rongo people and Awendo people are happy with that. Uh, it is uh, uh, the height of bad manners to come and ask sooner people what I did for them when I was not elected eh, to individually do projects here. But they should be reminded that they are joining rural education, courtesy of me. They have gender policies, courtesy of me. Disability policies, courtesy of me. Youth policies, courtesy of me. Uh, CDF, courtesy of me and others. So that's my contribution to the larger Kenyans.